Hey, Podcast Mesmer- America, welcome to the mesmeration of oh, episode shit, 79. <laughs> yeah, the Light Neanderthals podcast brought to you by Training Northwest. <laughs> and before we talk about the show notes, we've just posted our first, what I'm going to call a beginner's rifle course for hunters. That is so is Jordan or myself teaching that? I, you guys are both <laughs> good. You, you didn't know, but you guys volunteered to help oh, out. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> All right, no, continue. Um, anyway, the idea is uh, to get folks who are interested in hunting or just new shooters who have not had any formal instruction come out. You're going to get uh, some uh, hands-on safety. We'll go over the five fundamentals of marksmanship on the live fire range, get everybody, teach you how to zero your rifle at 100 yards, and then do kind of a field practical exercise at the end there to end it all out. How about this? Maybe your inaugural class, bring a backpack with a little bit of my loadout, give these boys a tease Mm. as maybe... As a hunter, a big, what you would take for a day, yes. what you'd take for yeah. a weekend. So your uh, backpack is actually on the required list of things to bring because you're going to need it as a uh, support for your, for your rest position. Yeah. 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 And then I can shame them later as to how cool mine is. <laughs> Sign up. Beginning. Sign up. TrainingNorthwestLLC.com. <laughs> Come on out and take some instruction from Dr. Professor Mike Kozak. Sure. Um, that class is happening December 14th in Granite Falls, Washington. Mike, show notes. Show notes. Uh, I feel this was a refractory period. Hmm. Everyone's a little burnout from we, elections. We, we shot our wad last week. <laughs> no, everyone's a little burnout from elections, and it's like so... It's pillow talk. What do you think is going to happen? Where where do we go from here? What's the goal? What's what? you burn out on elections? Listen for the next hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> like you're going to hear about it. <laughs> Enjoy the show, you guys. The, the, yeah. <laughs> I got it. And we're on. The, the next four years in Washington will be interesting because while I feel like the country is getting a little bit of a reprieve, we got we got harder left. Yeah, the With, whole, within our state borders. The whole yeah. union went red except for Washington State. We went bluer. Yeah. Yeah. We got deeper. Yeah. Deeper, we got blue, deeper. Deeper blue. Yeah. And uh, kind of uh, yeah. wrap the Wendigo situation. <laughs> <laughs> the one state holding out. We are, we are still behind enemy lines. <laughs> oh, um, dude. That's all right. I just think about the bridge being the <laughs> trussle. <laughs> oh. Yeah. All the time. Oh. Um, yeah, I don't know. We we were thinking of doing like a post election kind of reaction show, but the reality is it seems like the national reaction is pretty muted. Everybody expected like big fireworks and a big dust up, but it was like Trump won and everybody went, Well, good. That's good what help. happens when the good night. majority says. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the Electoral College. Well, would it did you guys have any anticipation as to maybe Kamala would win it? O- only because I don't trust the election integrity. Yes, that that was my biggest thing, and to have it happen so fast. Did I don't know if you guys watch it. It sounds like yeah, you didn't did. watch it, but um, yeah. As I was sitting there, I was like, okay, it's happening. I was it's happening. I was putting stickers on streaming Cairo off my phone for yeah. election updates. Yeah. Really, what yeah. I, said, I, I I half anticipated some midnight ballot dumps. Yeah, and so it was, I wasn't going to stay up that late, so I didn't bother to pay attention really. To anything, and then I woke up in the morning, and people had already texted Trump on, and it's like, okay, well, I, I was no need to read the the Twitters or the yeah. Instagrams. I was bouncing back and forth because, again, it was the like I wanted to see because Pennsylvania was like the one that I was like, okay, well, that's kind of the election right there, yeah. and when when that was unofficially Called he won, for, yeah. I was like, all right, yeah, I'm gonna go to sleep, but like. I couldn't imagine them doing it again, what they did last time, where all of a sudden a bunch more ballots came in out of nowhere. Well, I think uh, what's that But it called? scared me that that was going to be the case. What do they call it? Ballot harvesting? Like where a person will go to, say, maybe a retirement center, yeah, and they're like, are you voting? And they're like, yeah. And they're like, well, here's a here's a form. Here's to uh, to vote and stuff. And they kind of put a little bit of influence on people. And I felt that was used on 2020 a lot. I, th- I think both sides, both did sides did it. But then even I heard that the Trump com- campaign 
kind of savvied up to it. And so you can become, I forget if it's called like a lieutenant or a general, but <laughs> Trump was sending people out to you, do you it. You just got to put something in the mail for that? Yeah. No, 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 no. This whole like, fucking time, it's that easy? So if you signed up, like... I love you, it when you're signing up for something to be mailed to you and they ask you what your prefix is. I always put captain. Yeah. General. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Commander. But Police like if star. you if you signed five people up, you would get like a MAGA shirt. If you signed twenty people up, you'd get a MAGA hat. If you signed thirty people up, you would become like a general in the MAGA <laughs> army. Oh, shit. <laughs> so like they you get, so you get invited to the Capitol on January sixth this time around. Like you know what, guys, I don't think I want to go. Yeah. I won this free trip for selling all these belts. <laughs> yeah. I'm a general. <laughs> But I feel uh, like probably some of the tactics. I mean, a his, sightseeing tour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's wearing a buffalo hat. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. Hang on, how many ballots you gotta fucking to get harvest that? to get the buffalo hat <laughs> to be the shaman? Yeah, that is, <laughs> is that and is that a higher good. position than yeah, general, or is that like uh, as consigliere? Yeah. It's like that's, as uh, you know, in the the show Vikings, how they had that that seer that they would go consult. Oh. If you get the buffalo hat, are you the the seer the that seer. the generals consult? They come to you. I don't know. I don't know. We gotta, we gotta go talk to Tyler. <laughs> yeah, he'll guide us. <laughs> He's like, "What the fuck are you guys talking?" About? <laughs> it's like you know this is all bullshit, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fun. Uh, I'm a can you guys be serious for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like the maybe the Trump campaign kind of wised up to some of that the antics like ballot harvesting. I mean, Trump seems so confused in his first term like you look at the revolving door of his cabinet and yeah in, in, in like he's never ran he, he was a white belt yeah exactly and so i feel like maybe trump campaign maybe tried to use some of those proactive um measures to maybe get more but if you look at the numbers 2020 election it was like 50 million this election, it was like 70 million voters both sides, which, I mean, yeah. is out of control even more. Yeah, but, I mean, it's not. It's still less than it was last election. I thought the 2020 was 50 million per side. No. 20, no, it was, what did they say? Biden it got was a like record-breaking 80, 80, 82 million, million people voted for Biden. crazy. Yeah. yeah, and that's why, like, it's, I've seen a bunch of these little, like, bar graphs, and it's like, History's got a lot of explaining to do. Like, yeah. and it just like yeah. everything's about 50 50. Either, either 30 million 56. people swapped sides or didn't vote, or there's a whole lot of fake ballots that went into the boxes on 2020. Got yeah. counted. Huh. Yeah. So it's, it's crazy the amount of people who voted on 2020 that haven't voted before or since. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. and anyway, it did, whatever. But uh, what do you think the biggest like fuck up was for? Kamala Harris and the Democrats talking, talking, I was just <laughs> yeah, say. interviews. Well, do you think, but I think that's what Trump did like him and everybody on the Trump side. Yeah, they were doing long format podcasts. And it's, yeah. Well, it's authenticity is what it yeah. is, is you cannot survive more than a three minute soundbite unless you're authentic. So the one thing that we are finding out, the reason mainstream media is dying and, and podcasts and YouTube interviews are growing is that, with these independent shows like Rogan or Sean Ryan or just the big examples, Tucker Carlson, whoever, Enlighten Neanderthals, just to name yeah, some of the, the kind the of, top, you know, the, the top <laughs> upper tier. echelon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you, you can't just sit down here and give us your three minute soundbite and not answer the question. You know how the, the, like the political art of answering the question without actually answering the question, but just leading people down a road that goes nowhere. Mm -hmm. A lot of flowery language mm -hmm. and sort of Filibri, bright. Yeah, yeah exactly. And you can't do that in a three-hour conversation. You actually have to sit down and be able to talk, which requires authenticity. And that's more than anything. What I've been saying is, love him or hate him, you know who Trump is. Yeah. You do. Nobody knows who Kamala Harris is because we never got to see authentic Kamala. No, I and think that, it, that's true of political candidates. You know far and wide is you don't really know who they are. So more and more now this new model where you, you have to sit down on three hour interviews, look at like uh, semi bird going on Greg's podcast, mm -hmm. you know, obviously he was pushed out by the broken system, but as, as we go further and further, I think that's going to become the norm. Yeah, I would a hundred percent agree with that. But I also think that there was a big part of it that they're not really talking about on the news at all, that they didn't have a primary. And I think that they, because yeah. they did the same thing with Hillary and Bernie won, 
and they pushed Hillary in there, and people were yeah. like, fuck this. I, I was texting someone you and I both know from work who huh. was a hardcore uh, Democrat and, you know, full Biden support for full Kamala support. And I said, hey, does it bother you that you didn't get to have a primary and the entire system was usurped? And he didn't, like, we had been going back, mm-hmm. back and forth a little bit, and he, he would not answer that one. Yeah. I think it bothered a lot of people, and they're unwilling. They don't want to admit Only it. blue. Go yeah. on, on, vote for blue, nothing, you know. And but, not to say that I, I kind of do the same thing on the other side, but slightly. You know, I'd like to think I give things the benefit of the doubt, but I don't. You'd like to think. Um, yeah, we probably don't. I, I don't. I just, I don't. I, we, if we, there, get, if we, there's, get our, we get our controlled candidate, too. If there's two names I don't know, I tend to just go yeah. for the R. Yeah. Um, well, and, especially in this state where we need some balance. Like, I do like a little bit of check and balance. I don't, I actually don't like that the Senate and the house are both red right now. Same. You you like them kind of opposing each other. And so in Washington state, it's very easy for me as a voter because we are so heavily blue that it's, it's like just check the Republican candidate because we need some fucking balance out here. Yeah. Yeah, But hasn't the problem been like, uh, the two parties are stopping each other from getting anything done. Technically it's like they can't agree. So they're so staunch on their well, own. We'll, we're about to find out yeah. what, like having a house yeah. and a Senate what, that one are of both the, red. It's like, well, so and, it's and a, a judiciary that's fairly yeah. right leaning. So one oh, of the and things, two of them are about to be appointed again. So there's two, they're going to, Oh, two new appointments coming. Trump, this term. Trump will have what he's got three he's have, right like, now. He'll have five holy shit. He'll have five by the end of, I think. So what, that, that can be a good thing or that can be a very dangerous yeah. thing. Um, and that's one of the points I wanted to bring up with you guys is that it's not, this is just the beginning. And so now for all these people who've been waving Trump flags for the last four years and talking about a red wave, now is the time, now, or I should say, now is not the time to relax. Now is the time to hold your officials accountable mm-hmm. because now they actually have to put their fucking money where their mouth is. They have no excuse this time mm-hmm. around. They have the Senate, they have the House, they have the judiciary, they have the executive. If they fail to make all of these changes, it's because they didn't fucking want to and they their big money handlers told them not to. There, There is no excuse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, it'll, did, did you get, <laughs> sorry to... Cut you off. You're good. Says, uh, did you guys see the uh, the head guy of like ice? No. <laughs> and his no. speech oh, that was like, "Pack your bags, get get packing." Oh, I I saw a Robert F. Kennedy post that was uh, it was basically to anyone at the FDA, uh, USDA, NIH, CDC, preserve your records, pack your bags. Yeah, <laughs> which is good. like, yeah, good. They, they coming. Yeah, the, they well, coming. that that makes me excited to <clears throat> that. Yeah. The but the the ice guy that was a little hardcore. It was like, holy shit! I, I didn't. Sorry, so run that by me one more time. He he had a speech. He's, he's the current he's, director. He's of, going to be the he's director, be. I believe. Okay. And he basically was like, "Get back and yeah." If you're mid management up, no. If oh. you're an illegal immigrant, oh, get oh, packing. Oh. And then I was like, That's, Jesus is, Christ. Good luck. And then he goes, and the cartel, like, we're coming for you too. Good. That could be they, a good. Yeah. We're going to wipe you off the, the they face need, of the earth. They need to treat the cartel like a terrorist, terrorist organization. And they're in Washington. And we've talked about this before. The blueprint exists. It was JSOC wrote the blueprint for how you hunt people down and eliminate them with Al Qaeda in Iraq. They've continued it with ISIS. We have the know how. Yeah. We and we just it. need to turn all of that against the cartels. Yeah. You think it was interesting how uh, Washington State uh, enacted the uh, uh, National National Guard. Guard? Oh, mm-hmm. they were they were hoping for some sort of unrest. I, I think, think D.C. and Chicago did it as well. Yeah. No. Yeah. In Oregon. In Oregon. Okay. Maybe it was Oregon, not Chicago or Illinois. Yeah, there. Were, I think there was three three okay. places where they were like, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna." Get the National Guard ready. And it was like, what the fuck? But I heard a few weeks prior to that that they did some sort of a bill or something passed where you could actually use the military on U.S. soil. There was a lot of internet rumor about that, and I looked into it, and everything I found is that it's false, is that Posse Comitatus still exists and is still in effect. You know what that's Latin for? Uh, don't fucking shoot me here in America. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just checking. <laughs> not 
not here. Yeah. <laughs> is it re- what I is have it? no I have oh, no okay. clue. This is me just trying to be a smart <laughs> I, I just know it's it's the rule or the law that prevents the US military from being yeah. operational in US soil. Yeah, I believe it uh, it translates roughly to not up in here. Mm. Not up in here. Mm. Well, that's what that's martial law when the military takes over in the states or even just an offensive operation because that that's what everybody that's what all the internet rumors were was there was some uh, bill enacted that would give the United States military authorization to use lethal force on American citizens, soil. yeah. Fuck. <laughs> that would be so crazy. <laughs> and then all of a sudden this happens and we got three super blue states, you know, yeah. or at least here at home. It, it, I that you could never turn the United States military against the people because all of the grunts in the United States Are military the they're from the backwoods and from the Midwest. They don't come from like the wealthy elite yeah. fucking, you know, Hamptons. Yeah, they, but, yeah. they come from Ohio and fucking Texas. And, and I think there's some of those boys that given the chance to come up to Seattle and have at it. <laughs> <laughs> Pop a few lids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk about run out of steam, huh? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. This, this whole thing doesn't seem to be um, too surprising. The fact that I feel like the Democrats maybe felt like some of them may have felt like, hey, we just had somebody put in that we don't didn't care for, and we just have this choice that give make made for us with no primary. I think that was it. I think the fact that Trump and his Trump and uh, his vice president and you know JFK or not JFK but uh, R RFK. Um, they were all willing to go and do long format podcasts and not just like little bullshit podcasts. They were like, yeah, I mean, going to Theo Vaughn's podcast. Trump Everything, was on yeah. Theo's podcast. Trump did uh yeah. flagrant with Andrew Schultz. But those are also what get the most amount yeah. of views. Yeah. But y- yeah, I get but that. It, but he then, also realized that you have to, you have to kind of show yourself to pe- this is the social media age now. But I also like the fact that shout out to all the young guys that went and voted. Cause that, that was huge. A bunch of, you know, the, w- this got to be one of the first times that a Republican had oh, a the, mature, the young vote, the young vote. Yes. Yeah. And so that leads me to my next thought as I was sitting here is can the democratic national party recover from this? Because it seems to me like the old machine, the Hillary Clinton, the, uh, John Podesta, the Barack Obama, they've, they've sort of had control of the party here for 12 years or 16 years or so. I, I think they're done. Right. I, Outside of just completely cleaning out the party, which it will still be controlled by the same interests that control it now, yeah. which makes me wonder if they can ever come back. Because especially if the next four years, if the economy turns around, if interest rates drop, if housing and uh, you know living costs go down, then whoever follows Trump, like let's say just hypothetically it's Vivek follows him as the presidential candidate in four <laughs> years. Now, he's set up on the backside of the Trump success. Mm-hmm for eight years of his own presidency, just based on the success of these, you know, 2025 through 2029. Right. Yeah. Um, well, I I've, can't. And so while, while I, there's a very clear path to future success for the Republican party, for the democratic, like their survival is, it's not looking awesome. Yeah. Well, if you look at like the Democrats that ran, a lot more in the 90s and early 2000s, I feel like it was a little bit of a kickback uh, due to Republicans in the 80s uh, kind of aligning themselves with church and God a little bit more. Well, it, and Bill Clinton, he was the Donald Trump of the 90s, right? Yeah. He played saxophone on Saturday Night Live. He was yeah. kind of like a down-home, small-town guy that everybody could relate with. Yeah. But I felt like Democrats got more traction because they're like, a lot of Americans are like, I'm not, I'm not a, cr-. yeah, maybe God exists or God's cool, but it's like. I just like blowjobs. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, I don't, I don't identify my whole life and my existence as being with the church or with being a Christian. And in that same mentality, I think a lot of leftists were like, yeah, I feel like I'm Democrat, but it's like, 
I don't need tampons in the boys' locker yeah. room. Live and I let do. live. Yeah. yeah. And so, it's so, like, so does the Democratic Party collapse now, and does something new not come collapse, of that? Or does it, yeah, they it's going to have to come under They're going to have to figure out who they are. It's an but identity But that leadership crisis. is still going to be there. Will it? I mean, maybe for a little bit, but it's that, a fad. I yeah, feel like a little 100%. bit. 100%. Will this fad kind of flame out and the Dems will, will reinvent themselves a little bit? I, I think the fad is going to flame out. I and think so. Yeah, gonna, I think the gonna, fad yeah, is flaming. We're going to look back out on woke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I feel like that's like why a lot of people maybe voted Republican. or tra- It's like a little bit of my party is kind of their heads are up their own asses in certain ways. It's like, I'm all for freedom. Do what you want. But the ideology of the left became so dogmatic and intense. It mm-hmm. was like and a lot so of Republican so Christians. Extreme. And ridiculous. And, uh, Fucking yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it, it, they say all the brain, everybody with the brain is on the <laughs> Democratic side. <sighs> How? Yeah. No, just, that, that's, I, that's always been... That's been the smug Seattle thought bubble idea. There's the idea that nobody in Alabama or Texas is intelligent is retarded. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just as retarded as those guys are. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, I just, it, it seems to me like, yeah, all the educated people, but it's like, there's a lot of people making shit happen that don't have college degrees. Oh, a college degree is no. But that's longer, what they're. That's what they yeah. consider an uh, educated person. Yeah, that's somebody that's with not, a college degree. It doesn't that is some measurement that is of intelligence very slowly beginning to change? Is that people are starting to say why? What do you learn in college other than indoctrination into play, the fucking yeah, you, democratic you learn party? How to play beer pong, and you come up with the idea that you're entitled to this four years of playing beer pong because America owes you an education. Yeah. Yeah, and for, then, and that when you're done, and the real selling point they give the kids is they tell them that they're going to have a big fancy job when they're done because they're college educated. The reality is they don't have know how to do fucking jack shit. Mm-mm. And we're headed into an, one of the good things that's going to come out of this economic downturn is and and this administration, especially with Elon Musk and what he did with Twitter, cutting out like sixty percent of its employees who weren't so doing cool. anything, and especially if he comes into the federal government to improve efficiency, is we may have a return in America to the idea that you must be a producer. We have gotten so lopsided and out of balance with producers versus non producers, I guess is what I'm gonna say. Like mm-hmm. where the federal government is the largest employer in the country. Yeah. That produces jack and shit. So we, we've talked about this, you know, are you a creator, someone who creates and produces something of value, or are you purely a consumer, someone like a bureaucrat um, who doesn't, you, you're not creating anything anybody's willing to exchange their value for. So what what exactly do you provide for society? And we've gotten way out of balance where we have way too many just pure consumers and not enough producers. And we need to get back to a much more... Um, not balanced. We need far more producers than yeah, people willing to work hard. Exactly. And that, that comes from both cutting off social welfare benefits mm-hmm. or, you know, putting extreme limits on them. And then also the government willing to do and, more with less. Yes. And then cut it like businesses need to, or it's not so much biz, Most businesses do cut their fat. It's probably only these big tech businesses that have so much fucking money that they can sort of throw it around a little bit. Um, but I, I think a time in American economy is coming where businesses start looking at their own efficiency and going like, oh, shit, okay, we can, we can seriously slim down here. And if you aren't producing, if, you're, if we ask ourselves, hey, Mike, take a week off. And if nobody really, if it's not that big of a hiccup for us, bye. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you're someone who you're like, oh, I can take a week or two off, they never miss me, that, mm-hmm. that's not a good sign. Well, it's interesting, too, to think that maybe this becomes the era of, like, business owners being involved in politics. I mean, Trump is buddy-buddy with Elon. They just talked to uh, Zelensky today. I think it was today. But Elon was on the conference call with them. I mean, because he's providing Starlink and things. But Trump was a business real estate construction guy. And he views the country in that way. You're seeing Elon Musk become, I mean, he's already famous, but he's more involved with politics. It would be interesting if you saw more producers get involved with the political system than people that are just 
career politicians. I mean, that's a completely yeah. different strategy to run a country than being civil servants throughout your whole life. Yeah. Well, when you say Elon's famous, but it's like he's famous for having for created. creating. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, now he's getting more. I mean, he's buddy buddy with Trump. Yeah. You know, they're they're making phone calls together in a war torn nation. And is this maybe like a Vivek even is the same thing. He's self-made. He's not a career politician. Maybe this is the start of movers and shakers a little bit trying to get Because the difference between those two and a career politician is they understand how to move the ball forward. Right? Like you can say Elon didn't design the rockets. No, he didn't. But he, he came up with the idea. He hired the team. And he became the guy who could launch and recover his rocket in a fucking very short amount of time. That's the guy you want focused on your world problems is somebody who understands how to take an idea, hire the right team, and then move the, guy, yeah. move the, move the ball all the way down the field into the end zone. And get rid of the bullshit yes. that doesn't need and to be And do it there. efficiently. Because, I mean, think about what that could do if if they were able to get rid of a bunch of agencies and just all the bullshit yeah, what, that what gets if, the how bureaucracy. How much money does NASA cost? Hang on, let me pull up. The, where's my Google? <coughs> I know because they get seven percent of the national budget, seven uh, to ten. But I mean, just just as far as you know, anything, all of it. Yeah, NASA's you know what I mean? been in a quagmire for a while. They NASA and and just general bullshit that we spend money on the billions of dollars the American taxpayer just can't. I mean, look at look at like California. They had twenty billion dollars they spent on homeless. Yeah, it's not bad. And they go point to one homeless person we helped. Yeah, like uh, where'd the money go? Uh, it's four years you've spent twenty billion dollars, and they're yeah. like trying to like figure yeah. out where the money went. NASA's, and They can't point to it. NASA's twenty twenty budget was twenty two point six billion dollars. What did they produce? Or probably like a rover. Yeah, some DEI <laughs> fucking, <laughs> fucking PowerPoint some reports that t-shirts. all astronauts have to watch before they're allowed to report to their duty state. You know what I mean? Get like by. Yeah. And I'm sure that and I know actually I know SpaceX gets federal funding, so it's not like they're completely privately funded, but they're doing a lot more than NASA. Well, oh my god, incredible. <laughs> Like, what was it, the, the astronauts that were stranded on the space yeah, station? Yeah, due to they're Boeing. Like, they're like, <laughs> yeah. uh, Elon, we really don't want to help ask you for help right now, but we have this little problem that we can't uh, yeah. we can't solve. Yeah, it'd be interesting if you see more business owners step in. Everyone on the left wants to go, oh, greedy business, like just giant business, but it's like everything that creates your economy is due to an idea just or the a creation business. itself. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you don't have people coming up with ideas that are valuable to someone else, you don't have an economy and nobody has a job to work at. So everybody who goes to work at a job, that job was once just somebody's idea yeah. and that person brought it into reality and now you get a paycheck because of it. So shut the fuck up with this demonizing people who own businesses. The problem is like within the government is when the business starts and they have a truly like virtuous idea and they want to solve a problem. And then they create this, this branch or this, this, this agency or whatever you have and they solve the problem or get close to solving the problem. And then they pivot and they keep all that bullshit on board and they just keep the funding for just what oh that dog oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that right a dog running without a leash yeah. or with a leash on but with, no at owner a, at a very and his owner looks pissed <laughs> yeah. um yeah it just it, it seems to me like there there's probably a ton of fat everybody i think knows that there's a bunch of people go to the dmv okay. there's fucking government fat yeah. right there i mean we know this Let me, hey guess what you don't need a driver's license to operate your motor vehicle in a free country. Just eliminated a whole lot of taxpayer taxpayer burden right there. Yeah. But, you know, you should have an ID. <laughs> to vote. But not, yeah. But not a digital one. <laughs> um, I was it just, should be act, tattooed. As you were talking about that, I was thinking about the hypocrisy of all of the people in Seattle who rant and rave about Jeff Bezos being so wealthy when... They all work for him. Yeah, or or they work <laughs> for a subsidiary, it. or that it, just the fact that all of the money in Seattle is a direct result of Amazon and Boeing. 
So two, two of the companies they love to criticize, but at the same time, if those two companies were not right here in this locale, oh, and Microsoft, mm -hmm. then all, all of the wealth that is circulating here in the Puget Sound region is largely due to those three companies. It comes in through them and then circulates into the economy. Yeah. And it's like, th these are college-educated tech workers. So that, that right there that shows you for exactly. student loan forgiveness. Yes. Tech, tech, or sorry, not tech. College prepares you for one specific thing, and that's to be a good little employee in your little cubicle. Yeah. Ask I mean, no questions. This is the dogma. I, I think there's obviously really important reasons to go to college. Um, as far as being a doctor, as being lawyers, being, you know, all the sorority girls. So, yeah. Beer pong. Getting beer pong. Yeah. yeah, exactly. The beer pong, football games, Toga. tailgating. Um, Toga. Yeah. Toga. Panty raid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Panty raid. <laughs> what sorority were you in? <laughs> oh, you could do that now. Son of a bitch. We were born 20 years too late, boys. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be trans. Just, mm -hmm. what, what do they... What do they call it? Pledging? Pledging. Yeah, I'd, just be, yeah, yeah. I'd just be curious. Trans curious. Yeah, but that's enough. I just need to live in this house for a year. Yeah. <laughs> I just to need figure to out where what is my sexuality. Yeah. I mean, we, we don't really know right now, but I bet with the help of my sorority sisters, I can figure it out. <laughs> yeah, get to three or four of you little bitches. <laughs> <laughs> we all come back with uh, thongs. Jordan's got a couple yeah. uh, jock straps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wrong panties <laughs> oh, no. what, what, what the hell guys wrestling is awesome <laughs> yeah yeah these identify as thongs yeah. <laughs> they just don't hurt yeah <laughs> Good. the guys on the team are so nice to me <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck oh that took a turn yeah um, sorry <laughs> I screwed you up with panty right yeah you did oh, yeah sorry what do you, I, again, I just, I didn't think that it would be so, such an ass beating, the election. Oh, I thought it came back way too close. Because by, I, by I the did, time. I did, but I mean, I just, right out the gate, it was like. Right oh, out the gate, it was just like a. This is it. Yeah, it was a thumping. Oh. And then the West Coast closed their polls and it, yeah. it kind of surged back. The West Coast. Dude, but you know what, to be honest. that red wave. What, what I kept, what I kept flipping back and forth was the local news because uh, really what matters in this whole thing is, is our local. It would be interesting to turn on like MSNBC and just hear like Rachel Maddow's excuses or take or what I, you know what I mean? I'm sure other people have heard this by now. Something off. Yeah. There's tonight. a, there's a ton of different things I was watching, but it's, it's, it was, I, w I wonder if they are admitting to themselves. We like, fucked up. Fuck. We've been lying to these people for 12 years. They finally yeah. are figuring it or, or are yeah. they, or are they compounding it with yet more bullshit stories? It, it's always more bullshit stories, yeah. but I, yeah, it's all bullshit. Stories. I mean, the whole country went a little bit more red. So, I mean, there has to be a practical analysis of what happened. We are, like we said earlier, we're, we're the only state that went bluer. Yeah. The whole country went whole country redder went a lot as red. well as federal. Yeah. It hurt watching our election like locally because i was watching it on like mm -hmm. and i wonder because we are we are 100 percent mail-in ballot in washington state i have serious questions about how fair our election is i don't have proof i just have it's just so easy to to commit fraud when everything's done this well way. Uh, in a lot of those initiatives for our state went towards the blue like the long-term tax credit yeah. the the emission stuff with natural gas yeah that being that overturned i mean i and i don't know you look at but they also worded all that on the ballots Very it, was, it, was, it was i almost filled mine out incorrectly because of that exactly yeah. and I, I thank god i took you know the 15 minutes to read through everything because it was like oh wait a minute the way that you're right, the way a couple of those initiatives were worded were confusing. Oh, very confusing. And it was like, what the fuck? Yeah. And then, yeah, you had to break out the, the book and start <laughs> looking. But and, yeah, because it was like what, the, the gas one, dude. I just. Both the gas one and the, the repeal of. Uh, carbon credit. Well, it was that one and the. Uh, long term health care. Long term health care one. Yeah. yeah. Were, yeah. were not worded well. Yeah. Either way, either side you go, you find this group that is just blind patriots to whatever, you know, blind patriotism to whatever the uh, cause du jour. the cause is. And it was so uncomfortable being there. And it, like I said, 
we're at we're at the tap house. Simi Bird's talking, and it is just like fuck yes. This he's saying everything I agree with, and it's like is he in my mind? How did he know that that's what I believe? Or if it wasn't, it was like that's a brilliant idea I haven't thought of. But people seem like they're in a trance. But right? people are in a trance. Where do you just, see was, people other than that that look like that? Because I have a specific spot I'm thinking about. Church? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but that's the same thing. Yeah. And this is what I've always said about cult culture and stuff. And I think it pertains exactly to elections. I mean, you see people go nuts for their revered, reverent person. Yeah. Well, this guy talks to God. This guy talks to the people. It's two kind of but the same thing. Do you, do you it think is. we're all just really susceptible to social programming? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Just, absolutely. We're just a bunch of soft brained fucking. But you, well, when you sit back and you look at it, because that's a thing that I was like, I was like, I agree with what he's saying, but I'm also watching the crowd and I'm feeling like the energy of like how everybody is just like, this is the answer. This is the one. This is the Messiah. And it was like, what the fuck? Fuck. Yeah. I mean, he's got great ideas, but he's just a man standing that, there. That goes back to what I was saying in the first part of the show about we need to hold everybody who's been elected now accountable because so many people went, yeah, we won. It's over. And it's like, no, no, no. It's not. It's barely it's begun. just begun. It's just begun mm -hmm. the, the effort to turn this country around. And uh, it's it's that kind of behavior that you're talking about where it's like, everybody's just looking towards having their guy in place and they think that's a magic card that's going to, or a magic trick that's going to solve all their problems. Yeah. But that That's not the case. No, now it's time you, to work. Yeah. Well, it's like getting people into, and I think of it like a fitness program. Yeah. If someone, if you had a group of three different like personal trainers and this was on TV and there was viewers voting on it and rating it like American Idol, but if someone's like, I'm going to make you eat this Mediterranean and someone goes, I'm going to make you eat pescatarian and someone goes, I'm going to make you eat vegetarian and they voted on it and it's like, oh, I'm all excited. It's a bunch of different contestants on this, but it's like, that's not the hard part. The hard part is not picking we're going to get rid of all these illegals. We're going to tighten up this. Like the words are the pleasing thing, the idea, the thought process. Here's the path forward. That path forward sounds so sexy and it seduces you at the time. But what everyone does forget but we're not, is we're not that promised a path forward. We're promised the fucking end result. Yeah. And the path is what needs to be illuminated. And that's the problem. Is that you're pro in the, all these elections and what all these people say is like, hey, it's this. How are we going to do yeah. it? Uh, imagine if he and had what, built the wall the first time. What do you have to do? What do you have to do to make it happen? And what are you as an individual American willing to do to make it happen? And yeah, how but, far how far across the aisle are you willing to reach? And it's tough here in Washington because we got so like it's it is the most extreme left wins period. That is yeah. how it is in Washington. We shifted. We shifted so fucking hard where that's all the it is. But to time. like for me to go out and like have a conversation with somebody who's liberal or has a different ideology than me, they are still like you. It's hard to have a conversation and be like, hey, like, what do you think about this? Why do you think about that? And can you look at it from my perspective and truly look at it from my perspective? Or are you that person sitting there at the rally in a trance? when you're talking to me and you just have no way of fucking getting out of your own lane and out of your own head and looking at it from a different perspective. And that is so fucking important and so hard to find people to do it that it, it makes the path forward really hard because we, we have to do it as a group. And if 50% of the country doesn't want to do it, it's real hard to make 50% of the country do anything. Yeah. But what the, <laughs> I stumble upon what you say as like the end they're promising you the end result. And I don't think that's true. It makes me think of world war two Congress voted on it and they're like, we're going to, I, go I'm to saying war. when they get, when they get elected, uh, I think it's like, this is what we need to do. And here's a path forward. This is where we're the direction we're going. But I'm saying the Pete, the trance, the people looking at the trance, they're looking at that far off picture not paying attention to what do you have to do today you have to when you wake that, up yeah. as a human to like be kind to your neighbor. But it's I, time to start being like better to the people around you. 
And hopefully you do. But then, I mean, you have to think if Trump wants to get rid of all these illegal people. Yes, you have to be nice. But I mean, it's like 9-11 once again. And Tobin's kind of said this. But if you see something, say something. And like, what do you do if you think your country is inundated with these people that technically say, I mean, say it's like he gets in. He's like, we're going to everyone that's here illegally is a criminal. So technically, you being more head on a swivel, like what does that mean as as a citizen? You're like you're turning in people. I, I, I don't in a think. Way. I don't think that's the. I don't necessarily think that that's the path forward. Yeah, no that that leads I, to hotlines for turning in your neighbor. Yeah, and that's that's not being. But kind we just either. had that with COVID, COVID which wasn't even. Yeah, but that's what that that's what was that, happening. Yeah, right. That, so I don't get me wrong. I I don't like undocumented illegal immigrants in this country period i don't like the thought of somebody being unvetted that could have been a criminal could have been this could have been that and is just walking around giving their second chance in the greatest country on earth for the record i, I would like to be an undocumented citizen i'm <laughs> yeah. pretty upset about the documentation well, yeah, no, of me that has taken place but that's date. what i'm saying is they're they're living my best life and yeah. it kind of upsets me we talked about this on one <laughs> podcast it's like it's like, it's <laughs> like it's like, like I'm jealous. Yeah. I'm jealous. Yeah. You're li- you're doing what I want to do. You're yeah. off the grid. Yeah. And I appreciate you're not paying it. taxes. Yeah, not, but yeah, exactly. but they're doing it on the backs of everybody who is. Yeah, and it's it's yeah. tough to go. Well, are you being fucking kind because you're not kicking into this? You know, yeah. ten million undocumented people in this country are all mm-hmm. off the backs of the. You know, that's that's over a percent, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. of the population in the last four years have gotten here. Yeah. My guy's taking. <laughs> Are you, did you just take a fucking bong token? My Don't house? worry, we're fine. Keep going. <laughs> um, but uh, it smells, it smells, smells like, like strawberries. <laughs> yeah, this is That's something. A fart. <laughs> Excuse me, it's queef. Um, no, but I think that that path forward, like I said, if you had a show, it's like it's all about the path forward. Everyone gets excited. Hold on, about let me finish. That. Let me finish about the yes, undocumented yeah, people because that was a, that was a, that was a left. That was <laughs> but, a, no. But I want to finish my my uh, so people don't think I'm a piece of shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I want them all out. Uh, no, did you see what Trump was suggesting about if you come to America and you get a uh, uh, what is it? A di- not a diploma, but uh, you graduate from college. GED. Or or just, di- well, no, just a you diploma. You, I guess it's a diploma. Yeah, yeah. I guess when you gra- graduate with some sort of college certificate, um, you stay in the country. That's your automatic green card. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> Bunch of liberal fucking. Immigrants. Yeah, I was just gonna say. Yeah, why? Why would we put them into the indoctrination <laughs> camps? Yeah, yeah. Mayamo um, is they. Done. But it's just. I think the most American thing you can do is immigrate into this country. Yeah. yeah, like that's that's what the start whole business. people the are whole, the most important thing. The whole thing is based yeah. on that. So I, and to that degree, it's like I you, want you these can people fix it here. By ending social welfare programs. Yeah, I want these people here. Yeah, I care the, about. Then the only reason humans to come here is to work, and that's it. And it not to work. not to skimp on the fucking backs of the rest of the Americans. Yeah. So that's that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for leading me out of there, guys. It was a dark hole, and you guys were my light to pull yeah, me yeah. out of that little... That's what we're here for. Yeah, word soup I had there. No, you want... any People are valuable. Like we had said earlier, like, your time is money. Money is time. Mm-hmm. They're the same thing. I mean, thing. They, so he, valuable, in fact, people traded them at one point. Yeah, but that was manpower. I mean, you were literally Human possessing resources. someone yeah. to have manpower. And America owning black people was not the only form of slavery. Slavery has existed. There, there through, are more people in slavery per capita in the United States today than right at any time in our history. Well, not the United States, throughout the whole world. I, I think in the U.S. as well. Mm, what do you mean? Most you, of it's Africa. What do you mean? Are we talking like I'm, prisoners? Sex yeah. trafficking. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, that's a good time. What are you talking about? I was a sex slave for yeah, three love, years. Love your job. Never work a day in your life. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I got to suck what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many? Yeah. No, Good thing but, I shaved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but slavery has existed throughout the entire course in history of time. But it, what you're after is achieving a goal, getting something done. Yeah. 
they say the pyramids were built with slaves and it's like, yeah, no guy that's running city council is going to be like, I'm going to volunteer to carry this rock up and build this mm-hmm. pyramid. I don't think that's how they were made, but I'm just no. using that as an analogy because yeah, because it was made with sound. Yeah, well, they, you, they rolled them on logs. Yeah, yeah, it's clear. Well, that. some of that, yeah, maybe, mm-hmm. but uh, but that oh, requires I man start time. Lifting. I'm going to lift your beer up. Mm-hmm. The levitated. But that requires man time, and man time <laughs> yeah, is it does. man time is money. I mean, <laughs> your time is your money. Your mm-hmm. existence is everything, and people are not the problem. The problem is people inner fighting with each other. Yeah. That and that's what all this election shit. This is the problem. But that's with the that's world. what I mean, the path forward. That's that that is the path no, forward. No, no one's to, giving you that path. That's what I'm saying. You but you have to go out and get it every day. If you're an, an asshole to your neighbor because they have a different political fucking view than you, pull your head out of your ass and try and be a good person to that person, even yeah, be, though be the change. Be the change you want to see in the world. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, Golden but rules and shit. if you live next to a crazy liberal Karen, there's something well, fun about fucking with it. But that's yeah, the, that's, 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 that's not going to make person. They're not going to yeah. see. But that there has to be those have, have people. Have your middle school age the, kids do that. Yeah. <laughs> being you able, have to be the bigger person. I remember being younger and knowing, like even to this day, some of my best friends are Democrats, right? Yeah. Staunch yeah, yeah, Democrats. Yeah, tons. But it's like we're still very, very close. That's okay. Yeah. And to be able to do that and like be willing to do that where I've met other people that were like, if they, they saw my hat, my Brent's hat, remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's, so there's tons of examples of people that are just unwilling to see you in a different light than of absolute fucking idiot and an asshole and a racist because yeah. you're a Nazi and you're this and you're, and it's like, but I, I think, but you got to look on the other side. They're not all hippie fucking sissy lalas. The kind of are, but, but you, we just got to be able to get along to because be, be the bigger person so that when you do have that interaction, hard. The, yeah, yeah. But what you're so the problem is, is like you can say, here's your goal. Here's a utopia. You have all these different countries and now they live harmoniously. Right. But that doesn't happen. The way you get to that utopian society is someone showing you what the path forward is. Like, you need to be led. Just like all those diets, people get excited and they're like, dude, if I just eat this, I'm going to be shredded and look good. But it's like, yes, this is the path forward. The effort is in what people do to make that path walkable or to continue walking that path forward. Human beings' biggest problems are getting involved with other human beings. Once we kind of figure that out, which I don't think we understand, that's when you start to plan for those long-term goals. But do you think that that's like, who who is going to be, is that now Trump? Trump and his No, 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 but that's where it goes back to, like that, that charismatic leader, the cult leader, the following, the person talking in the church or at the rally that gets you so enacted, it feels ungodly. You see people go nuts for celebrity in that aspect because I think people are looking for a better way. They're looking They're for lo- That's what science is yeah. too. It's like, here's a truer answer. If you do this over and over, you get the same result. That's, but that's what a human characteristic I think we're evolving and we're learning. And through communication, I think this helps us go. I do feel, like we said earlier, this election was changed due to long format and stuff. Most things are a synopsis or like a condensed article in yeah. a newspaper. But that's, that's but, I guess, to what I was talking about. That's the, yes, I agree 100%. And I think that that is changing. Yeah. But before, and this is how elections were won, was promising the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Because they had without they had the path. Read my lips. No new taxes. Yeah. And now, <laughs> That's good when you George. when you, they yeah, sit down one. and they have they have the three hour podcast, two hour podcast, and everybody in a fucking cabinet's doing it. So it's like this is the first time I've known X amount of people that are going to be on a cabinet. Yeah, yeah, that's a solid point. And 
they were all doing interviews and they were all posting on social media and they were all making some valid points that weren't 30 second sound clips. Yep. It was like holy shit, and they're and they're coming and, up with it themselves. And but that's why the, the, the change f- is happening now. You're you also seeing know the change. There's the issues live. that they're talking about and the points that they're making, there's truth in them because they can talk. If it were a lie, then they have to make their sound bite and get off the air. Yeah, because a lie can't. A lie has no foundation. Yeah, so it has no wings. It'll exactly. It'll, yeah. So the fact that they're able to talk at length about these things makes you. I shouldn't say makes you it. It shows you, yeah, that, that they're there's, honest there's, and real about truth it. in this. Yeah, um, the the one thing that like I'm super excited about Robert Kennedy getting yes. in there and dealing for with health. His health. Absolutely, it, it is. Absolutely. I kind of, uh, what's the other thing for assassination? Is isn't he doing some sort of task force for MLK? They, they and talked about JFK? that. I don't know if that was. I that that might have been more, that might have been more hype. <laughs> yeah, you know, sim- simmered down. But I also heard Trump talk about <laughs> just re- releasing the uh, all the. He said that is first term. <clears throat> well, it, and, I, I don't. And, this and may be he, internet said, rumor, but someone also said that Alex Jones may be press secretary. <laughs> Could you imagine White House White House briefings with that guy? That would be the greatest. Good that, morning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I, I would, hang on, I would watch TV every day for. Well, that. that's the thing. That I would, would, that my would ass be, would be CNN. You want some big ratings? Oh, yeah, no you shit. will get them. Yeah, and people come and ask him some ridiculous. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there with his shirt off, oh, like be, screaming. Oh, the, the greatest. And did the video <laughs> compilations of him on his show, like with a half gallon of whiskey and doing bench press, no shirt on. The guy's out of control. Alex Jones. He's fun though. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. it would, it would keep him on. He's fun. Honestly, but I poli- don't. I think politics is reality TV. It's, so it's he, he would definitely though. be a character that would keep people watching. Oh, but maybe watch. that is that transition. Like people are used to big personalities through rea- through reality TV. But what you're getting to do is be constantly immersed with like real people. Like yeah. again, it's it's authenticity. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, you, yeah. You know and maybe, who RFK is and what he's all about because you're. But you Alex have, Jones, our press secretary, isn't the best thing. But that's evolution. <laughs> the first step is things happen, they change, but then the weak get killed and the strong survive and live. Well, there's you know, it'd be a, you know it would be a you know would be a fantastic pay per view event would be a debate between <laughs> Alex Jones and Kareen John Pierre. Is that how you say oh, her name? The current oh, press, the secretary. press secretary. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. She's bad. She's it's, she's so oh she's cringe. Bad. But so was the other one, the, oh, the other the gal, red-headed the girl. Red-headed Circle girl. back, yeah. Circle but back. Trump's girl was uh, what was her name? Oh, the, the Barbie doll. Yeah, and she had that she briefcase was, was well, every uh, day. Oh my god, she was she's a shark. Well prepared. And it's so weird that they always want to say Trump is like uh, homophobic and sexist. Is like. Dude, his press secretary was a female. Yeah. His new cat, and the er, second one was, and his new solid. His new, uh, <laughs> what is it? His new cabinet head, I think, is a female. He announced. Yeah, I, I just and secretary I of ah, fuck, I forget, but it's a gay guy, and it's like, but it's like always all, with all the secretaries, these, but all these people have hardcore credentials. Yeah, well, and it's like that's a power move. It's like these people that are calling me that don't want me president are calling me homophobic and uh, I hate women. Yeah, tell you what, my lead is a woman, my guy that's going to talk to you, (laughs) yeah, super gay, (laughs) you know. But it's like Milo, (laughs) it's it's shutting like. It's shutting this shit down. I am so happy the elections are over so I can stop paying attention to the news for, like, seriously, three three years. Yeah. Like, the last year and a half up until elections, it's all political. But then it's like, before that, you get to do what you want to do. And I'm sick of hearing the words racist. I'm sick of hearing the words homophobic. Like, the left is called wolf so many times, Nazi. When I hear these things, they don't have the same power. Yeah, it's losing when, its as bite. A kid, yes. Yeah. Well, it's, and it's when, the, when the, it's the Nazis who cried wolf. when the Nazis yeah, show up, we're not so going to know. Times. We're going to be like, "What the fuck? You, you guys are crazy." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we it's going to be like, "No, before. there's a, yeah." And all of a sudden, it's going to yeah, be like, oh, it's like oh, you call the guy a Chipotle a Nazi. <laughs> Everyone's a Nazi. <laughs> yeah. So when yeah. in real, Nazis, you're charging me 
for guac, yeah. you Nazi. Yeah. <laughs> you guac Nazi. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. But what that does is that loses the impact and the meaning and the strength of a word. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm so happy this is over. Maybe we can get a little bit more of a straight arrow in our moral compass or yeah. direction. Do you think, I mean, realistically, that's what happened to the N-word, right? It got what? It got taken over. It lost all its potency. And they were like, you know what? We're going to take it. A little from bit. Uh, I mean, honestly, I mean, it was in rap. Black guys would say it all the time. But I mean, it was it was white people that came up with the word. <laughs> True. And it was taken. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was shit. Cultural appropriation. <laughs> yeah. But I, you know what I mean? Like, and now it's like, it's gotten, I, I don't know how that works, but it feels like the same thing. In a, I, in a certain way. I feel like if I hear that word in real life, I don't really react. But if I see it on Instagram, it's like, oh, shit. Because some guy just got knocked out. Yeah. I <laughs> I, you know, but that platform gives that word more. This is part of that social programming. Mm -hmm. It's showing you what the algorithm is to get upset. But you have things happen in real life, and it doesn't trigger you. But you see it on Instagram, and then you're like, oh, shit, this is this gives me a little bit more of an attachment or I know something big's going to happen. Do you, do you at all feel uh, bad for the, the hardcore left no. right now? No, not at all. You, you don't feel bad at all. No. Just uh, you don't feel that. But I mean, bit. think of, think about how we would have been if it was like, Oh, now we got four years of Kamala. Fuck the anxiety. We have. Do you, I mean, they have that. There's half the country that has this anxiety of like how fucking shitty would it have been if Kamala, who can't fucking speak without a teleprompter, she talks like I talk for Christ's sake, right? How cool would that? It would. It would have sucked. So the fact that that's the case, like half the country is truly like, what the fuck is going to happen? This. This yeah. is like I've so, been. I've been this, told this is, because this is why for the next four years everybody on the right has to walk the walk. Well, no, walk the walk and be kind to the fucking people who just because well, and, and literally to, and to show the resurrection of society like this show what we can do. It, it, yes. And that that light at the end of the tunnel that we've been promised and the path that is being illuminated now because they're divulging how their plans are going to be to get to where we want to go and kind of laying out this groundwork before they've even taken office is kind of cool. Makes me feel good. I see that as a difference. Uh, and maybe I'm just getting older and paying attention to politics more, but I'm starting to see a little difference in how this is going, possibly. Uh, but the other side, not only were they promising that light at the end of the tunnel, but they were saying the opposite direction on that other side of the tunnel where they want to go death. is fucking hell. Yeah, Don't go there. And now everybody's fucking facing this other end and going, let's go. We're yep. going. Yep. And fucking A, that'd be that'd be kind of scary. So I get where like these people are having like panic attacks yeah. and breaking well, down. Well, so so the answer is we're back again, walk the walk. Show them yeah. that it's not. But reach across, like be willing to be kind to your fucking left leaning neighbor. Although to be fair, I think things are gonna continue mostly as they have been. Oh, Washington down it, State. Yeah, it's gonna be down. And I I wonder how bad does Seattle have to get before King County goes, what the fuck are we doing? And and flips red. Four years, eight years, 12 years. Dude, I, I honestly, right now, it's the Does, the does it have to turn into full-on, like, escape from L.A. before people are like, you know what? This isn't working. One of my favorite movies. I'll fucking sneak close. Yeah, but maybe that's what the problem is, is just been government to citizen, like, clarity. Like, what's really happening like the idea of putting an RFK and being like, listen, man, maybe things like seed oils, uh, processed food, all this shit they put in, preservatives is bad. Here's the truth. Like this long but the, form. You, you can see the truth in your own city. Like it's very yeah, clear yeah, yeah, that yeah, Seattle yeah. is is yeah, it's just a shell of what it used to be. Oh, it's and it's. Well, but, dude, we we were doing a remodel day, and walked in. It's Friday. We walk in. And we haven't looked at any of the other offices, but we were doing fire alarms, so we had to go let people know we were testing and walk through the entire deal of the floor, five people in the entire building. I was like, what the fuck? 50 offices, five people working. No. Yeah. And it's like, that that's Seattle now because nobody wants to go down there. 
nobody wants to be a part of like, and obviously like COVID had a big, you know, effect on that. Huge. But now if people don't have to go down there and, and drive and they don't have to sit in the traffic and then they don't have to be in it, it's filthy and disgusting and they don't have to look at what they've decided to vote for. Yeah. But at some point it's going to affect them enough that you would, but that's what what there comes a tipping point. Yeah. I I just wonder how low it's got to get. I mean, yeah. It's seeing people almost dead on the sidewalk. Every single time yeah, you or walk. Dying, like yeah, or dying. Or dying and yeah. dying on your um, way to work. Constantly. You yeah. lose, you let's, get numb to it. Let's do more of this. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I don't know. But I, maybe it's organ like the amount of people that live in actual the city of Seattle compared to just on the outskirts. Maybe you do see that more in the city, but the people that live on the outskirts don't see it as much. Per I mean, but it's hard to. Yeah, avoid. but they all, they all work for companies. They the outskirts are the people who work in Seattle. Yeah, right. But now that they don't have to go to Seattle and they don't have to see it's what true. the fuck is happening, they're all moving to but Montana think, and Idaho. And well, just on the outskirts and pushing, you know, the state more blue and rural I, areas. Yeah, I wonder if the reason that places like King County are so blue is that they're majority renters. I wonder what the, the split of renters to homeowners in King County is. That's yeah. a good point. If it's heavily skewed towards renters, well, the then higher, that just shows you that it's your, your lower the, class demographic. The higher the, the average cost of homes, the deeper blue it gets, yeah. period. So that's just, all the people with all the money are most of the people with, a lot of money are Democrat yeah. Yeah. and it's like, Oh, well it's because we're educated. It's like, eh, no, no, because the lowest paid people are also Democrats. <laughs> it seems right. Just urban cities, mm-hmm. pretty yeah. blue, you yeah. know, retail, retail employees mm-hmm. are all Democrats. Mm-hmm. seems like interesting. But it used to be that it was the union uh, like the Democrats were for the working man for mm-hmm. unionization for but, equality, but m- that's all just changed. maybe how it's just changing. Oh, the union, the unions still blindly support the Democratic Party. Like Jordan and I got a mailer from the from. Did you get a mailer from the hall? And I it just told you it right like, away. Yeah, exactly. But it, it literally is a list of here are the candidates. You know, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers supports for office. And it's, they're literally telling you, like, hey, if you want, just vote for these people so you don't have to think about it. Yeah. And it's like, God, you fucking slimy fucks. <laughs> well, even the paper. And, does it, and it's that. all, it's Democrat all the way down the line. But even the paper, the newspaper, the newspaper does yeah, it. Yes. And it, a lot of it is yes. Democrat. Yeah. There is a huge correlation with. So, what, what I was going to say, sorry, is the union itself is still very much in bed with with the DNC but the the membership has shifted pretty pretty strongly yeah. to the right because we are the also working class well i think that's why you did see a trump thing cuz it's like yeah the democrats used to be for the little man now it seems like it's they're the republicans opposite and yes. it's yes and the democrats used to be anti war whereas now democrats yeah, every, are everything went bizarre war. world yeah and so I do feel like this is a shifting, and maybe you I'm a '90s Democrat. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. I still consider myself a Democrat. It's like the party shifted. Yeah. Pro, I pro small business, anti-war. Yeah, yeah. We are yeah. we are Democrats from 1997. Yeah. The the fucking height of grunge. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's weird, and I don't know. What comes of this? Because, like, there is a lot. Like, the China, it, it would be very interesting to see what happens with China in the uh, Pacific at the moment. And, like, especially by Taiwan. But they've I, gotten loosey-goosey I with their boats, just as Russia has with their jets. It's yeah. interesting seeing what a real person, like, Ukraine didn't happen while Trump was in office. No, hang on. Do you think China... Do you think their bluff was exposed? Because if they didn't make their move during the Biden administration, they wasted a big opportunity. I mean, we Putin we said, all, "Hold my vodka." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. We, I mean, we all thought that that was going to happen. They were going to invade Taiwan. That, that and was that the was, time. Yeah. And um, now, now with Trump coming back in, that, that opportunity has been missed. Yeah, but yeah. Taiwan's about to go, fuck. You sons of bitches are. Yeah. We're, we have, there is. You're making us pay up. Mm-hmm. I, I, tr- I think that, like, and who knows? I mean, obviously, I'm so fucking dumb when it comes to any of this stuff. But the fact, in high, high level, um, view trump is gonna tariff the shit out of china and so that's one of those campaign things although this came yeah this was last week of his campaign that you go okay is he actually gonna follow through on that or is that just some bullshit he put out there to rally up his base he tariffed the shit out of china in the beginning that's true yeah but he he didn't drop the income tax so you have to do both i think he's and i I forget who i was listening to but they were talking about how you can't just immediately slam tariffs on if you're going to use them it has to be like a slow creep because you have to give if the idea is to chase american or manufacturing back into the united states you can't just be like bang here's a 13 percent tariff yeah they, they have to move all their tooling they have to find a didn't, building they have to hire biden, a workforce there's didn't biden so it has do to it be, to russia as soon as they invaded ukraine they slapped them with a shit ton of tariffs on russia probably. and then they tried to seize russian assets at the same time I mean, you can do kind of whatever what well, you're. Oh leveraging. no! What I'm saying, if if you're trying to create use a workforce tariffs to to bring manufacturing bring back, back, it has to be a a there has to be a gradient a of increase. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, have yeah. to go. You can't okay. just be like, this All is right, coming. Here come the tariffs. Fuck yeah, you! Yeah. I was Build watching. Here. I was watching the election and flipping through all the different channels, and I'd flip back to Bloomberg. Because they're just all about stocks and like how it's going to affect any. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Bitcoin, baby. Yeah. Well, I mean, but they were talking about how China is like definitely had been prepping for the last few weeks leading up to this, like in in anticipation for a Trump election. And they were like, I think the whole world was. Yeah. There, there were there are a few people who are sort of deluding themselves that everybody was happy with the way things are. But that's that's why I think it's interesting to have watched some stuff on Bloomberg because they are literally about bottom dollar. This ah, is what gotcha. we think is going to happen. Yeah. You know, you know, global warming's happening, but the richest people still live on the coast even yeah. though it's supposed to be underwater. Yeah. You know, bullshit. <laughs> uh <clears throat> Yeah, so that's it was just interesting talk hearing what they had to say about China and I couldn't tell you what they said. Because <laughs> I'm not <laughs> smart enough, <clears throat> I guess. Um, they they said that China predicted this and had made the, the, arrangements. They were they were though. getting ready to to deal with that, and that there's going to be some investments in Chinese tech that will be interesting. Beyond that, sorry guys, that's all I got for you. Um, I mean, you do have to make it work with every country, and it's like a join very- us next week for international <laughs> monetary politics with Jordan Creek. Yeah, I'll have more. I'll do some homework. <laughs> Yeah, do a couple YouTube searches. <laughs> but you do, the way to, I mean, as a business person, like if he really, Trump is the best business guy ever, let's say, like war is not good for business. When there's a war breaking out between the United States and China, you're not Depends making money. What business you're in. Yes. Uh, for the war business, yes. But for any other business, for the most part. No, because war sucks up all the resources. True. I mean, you need food and stuff, but it's not a long lasting. If we want this, what resources whole, does war suck up? Precious metals, electronics, food, yeah, supply, the amount of food yeah. that goes there, Am- fuel, ammunition, Jordan. People. But I mean, that's the that's the stuff that we like. But I've never seen a war suck up an Xbox because Xbox well, wasn't invented because they're putting it but all that's in what I ships. Mean. Like, and, but what what's important it, it to people delays, now? It de- I guess what what's the what's the what is the supply? A, a major like World War Three scale war would affect your ability to well, buy an Xbox I, because all the the microchips would be going into weapons. Okay, just like I mean, we kind of saw that with uh, COVID. With COVID. COVID yeah. Um, I'm not kind of absolutely saw it with COVID, but I but mean, for is different that, reasons, COVID was that, a shutdown of manufacturing. This would be a diversion of resources to the war effort. So if you're a businessman, it sucks when a war is happening. Like, yes, maybe things are being consumed, but if you're running a hot dog cart, if you're running yeah. a roofing business, times if you're lean. Lo- times are lean on the yeah. home front. And so war is not good as a businessman. For a businessman, you would be like, if our country and your country are amicable, 
and they are trying to trade together. Mm -hmm. The most things are going back and forth. Yeah. Not you make one well, thing I, only. I think it's maybe if, my if, if I'm trying to get Mike to drink that beer because I have all the beer and Mike has to pay me for the beer, I'm going to be partnered up with Tobin because he's got some salty peanuts. <laughs> mm. And I, I'm going to feed you. Yeah. And then I'll buy more beer. Because you're going to need it because you have salty But beer. if I hate Tobin and I just want to punch him... I'm not going to buy any of his salty Jeez. nuts. <laughs> yeah, so I have to be the middleman and try. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what a true, a good president is making the entire world better. War has to be flex sometimes because people get naughty. Look at Hitler. Look at Mao. I, look I, at, I also don't understand people get the silly concept out there. of yeah. people like, well, Russia's our enemy. I said, why? And I don't know how many people can answer the why. That, yes. And well, rather than... No, they, other they'll say maybe, he's going to take over Poland, which I hate. You kind of yeah. saw what happened to Apollo, and I haven't forgiven much for that. But Apollo why, why not, why not make them a trading partner where they have, because if, yeah. if there's value in it for them, then they have no reason to break away from that. And if there's value in it for us. Yeah. But I, I think that's that's the business model that the, the Warhawks and the military industrial complex kind of wants to keep us away from, because that would... Put resources elsewhere well and that's a thought i've had too because it's like well right before world war ii we were non-interventionists and if we didn't get involved with world war ii who knows where the nazi party could have gone and right after that time too you see a lot of crazy dictators so it's like does there need to be someone that's like i'm the leader i'm just the world leader no mike say no, because America think, has done it. When they start, when you call somebody a dick, and you mean like you're an asshole, yeah. do you think that came short as like dictator no. or a dick? No, I don't know. Tater. You know what I mean? Sorry. Could be. <laughs> I just had a, a squirrel. <laughs> Benjamin was an ice cream flavor. He did <laughs> pralines and dick. <laughs> But I think the world is looking for one unified leader. This is where I always go. Either it has to be a person or it has to be a true representation of all the people that make the world. If you can have a committee or a government that's through choice by the people, direct representation, that does that has to be the best. Here he goes. Or you have one guy and you say what he says is the best. He's my elected official. I'm going to have one man represent me. This is where it's like, that's how you get to utopia. Either you have the greatest. I, I, I think people are too tribal for one. I think, I don't think we're that advanced that we are ready for one world mm -hmm. culture. Humans need you, humans are tribal by nature. So six more years of TikTok, you guys all be brain dead and you'll just do whatever they want. Not you in particular, but I'm just saying people like, there has to be a point like we're the world's growing resources are being used. There's going to become an epoch where it's like either this gets figured out or it doesn't that everyone on this planet is on this planet. It doesn't matter where you claim land back in the day or what it's like, you're going to have to figure it out. Yeah. And I feel like we're at a weird growing pain. Like the United States has been the best experiment to give people an honest view of democracy with technology, but uh, it's been nuts. Where does it go from here? How do you make it better? And I think maybe a little like people are revolting in a certain way. I think that's what Trump getting elected. I feel the common man feels misrepresented. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but the, like you said, it's always been TV, like Nixon, Kennedy, on ABC, NBC, whatever, for the debate. Mm -hmm. But now you're seeing people change. This is like a change of culture, a change of media, a change of government. Like, yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm happy it's over, but I, I, I leave with more questions and answers. I don't know where this continues to go. No, I don't think anybody really does. I mean, I, I, I like it. I'm excited about it. I, I would it feels be, fun. I'd be of. lying yeah. if I if I said I wasn't um, caught up in some of that because I, I see like again I've seen the people who just are mindlessly like yes 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 you know, um, and I part of me is like 
yeah, this is going to be great. Like somebody's coming to save me. Oh, <laughs> no, no one. But that's but that's He's the thought process, right? To save you. Yeah, I Jordan. well, I know that. I know that, and that's the thing. And I think of being with you guys and like having this um, realization that this is just another man standing in front of you um, is is really coming to the forefront of my mind, and I'm seeing it where maybe I would have been a little bit more wrapped up in oh he's here everything's gonna be fine like are you like everything's just gonna be perfect now this is my guy this is my guy um as much as I like to joke about it and have fun with it uh, I love it there's there's a certain level of like this is just another fucking human being yeah. like hopefully it all works out but I don't know but you see that people kind of get that way and they allow that one you know that one entity to choose their path for them. And they go, I'm just going to put everything on this guy. But like Tobin was saying earlier, that's, that's not the way to utopia because what's going to end up happening is you're just going to let that one guy make all the decisions and you're not working for it yourself. And you just go, my job's done. You're sitting on your ass waiting for your, for the change. Your ticket. It's been promised. I was going to, I was going to get an iPhone. Obama said, yeah, well, or or Trump said there weren't going to be any more illegal uh, immigrants. So I'm just going to sit down and wait. You two have a very interesting way. Uh, and it, maybe you won't see it in Washington, but like just business dealings and trying to like move your, the ball forward for, you know, both your companies, mm-hmm. um, and seeing like, uh, how easy it gets or how much harder, you know, so you guys have a, a way in which to like actually a metrics to measure, like is things are things getting better for the small business owner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. because uh, there's so many people no, that it's don't. It's gotten worse. Don't, it's well, so I know hard. it's gotten worse, yeah. but I'm saying like you it's guys, you guys have a barometer in which to like measure. It is it is extremely difficult to run a small business. Yeah, and but I'm, is it? And is I'm it, not even trying to do it as primary income. But I, is, it would be I'd be up shit creek. Why is it? Be, yeah. Because of the bullshit, the fees, the taxes. No all. taxes and money being not spent by other parts of the public. Insurance companies exactly. for me clamping. If it down. was, if it was, it's you guys. everything going inward and not expanding upon. Yeah. Like I said, I'm a Democrat of the late '90s. You give me Clinton's economy in '97. It's like, yeah, they, he said it best in his speech. He's like, you go into any storefront, I didn't they'll inhale. probably. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I did not have sexual. Yeah, if, if you really wanted to jumpstart the economy, you could remove. Oh, that was Bush. You could remove income taxes for businesses of a certain size and under. That that would light a fire under it. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think making taking the uh, Giving, restrictor plate off the old red dragon and letting yes. letting you guys tax breathe. initiative for innovation and business to start your own thing. Is uh, but it's like well maybe you create a bunch of things that just fail but you're gonna but you have some successful to do things something. and the government if it really was wanting to be great it would say hey you've done well let me give you a bonus like let me produce and accelerate you're doing something right yeah at, at this point the government is a restrictor plate. And you have to ask yourself why? Why are we funding this thing that makes it more difficult for us to go? Because about our we got to feed the dragon that is right. They are got so many people sucking off the tit of the government that just right. they'll never get fired, and somebody's right. got to pay their fucking but, income. And they also have been incentivized to tell you no. So they've been told that their entire purpose in life is to protect uh, the salmon that crossed the the highway down there at mm-hmm. you know ninety two. Yeah. Have you ever, I've never seen a salmon cross a highway, but how many millions of dollars <laughs> have been spent on fish crossing studies and fish crossing sign installations? Well, that's really you know the fucked mean? up thing is that it's all in the what? fucking weird studies that have no real value and didn't really create. They're just punking they us with those signs where well, it says fish crossing. Well, I mean, how how <laughs> it's like oh shit, slow down just in case they're out on the road. It's a Safeway cart return. <laughs> Why is there <laughs> salmon here? Studies that the data was wrong, and they were like, oh, sorry, we just spent. Forty million dollars on a study that, well, is kind of in, inconclusive. We got to do another forty million dollars because, like, your was it the doctor I just, I, friend you were talking about who uh, was like, I have, I stuff. have, well, you have to massage the data because <laughs> oh, if you, oh, PhD in uh, uh, wildlife, yeah. So studies. just like, hey, 
I ha- and that I is ha- the he government. He has to know who writes his grants. But that's the government. He wants to get paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the government doing the same yes. fucking thing. But I will say, okay, so I will I say this. I forgot where I was going. Hang on. I got distracted yeah. by yes, fish sir. crossing. Yeah. These no, fucking but PhDs and fucking you're making a good point too, and it's like our, the whole union shifted to the right, but our state shifted more to the left. And if you look at how it's, a beacon it's of constructed, blue hair. Oh, no, yeah. through the through the Democrat and the Republican, it's more top down in the Democrat. And it's more like there's a head guy and they get people to donate. And if you look at what the funding was for, um, uh, who's the Democrat of, I'm sorry, Bob Ferguson, Ferguson, it was like 26 million. If you look at what Republican party put in towards Washington for Dave Riker, it was 6 million. Yeah. And that's a factor of what four almost yeah, something crazy. Yeah. And so it's nuts to think too, that like so much money is involved with this way of not, not just governing, but controlling. Cause that's what it is. Yeah. It's governing is making sure this law is held up and that law is held up. Controlling is being able to give a narrative or a complete direction towards what what you see as maybe the best. But Washington State still is unique in a way because when people come up with proposals like, what was the initiative for $50 tabs, I-77 back in the day oh, and yeah. stuff, and yeah. like anyone can come up with an initiative, and our state actually helps fund new initiatives. Now, whether enlighten neanderthals initiative gets funding is a different question yeah but to give power to people and stuff like that i do enjoy that aspect of it but when you're looking at the structure of it in our state i feel like the hierarchy of democratic like how it's organized compared to the republican party is far superior and it's like in in our state well our state is so heavily democratic that do you think the Republicans think it, just gave up on Washington, like no, Oregon I think, or California? I think there's so much um, support here for. It's like there's no room. They they actively try and strike down anything that grows that's Republican. Yeah. Right. That's. I mean, look at all. Of, we are losing rights as like, you know hunting fishing guns washington state like republicans are probably losing rights as fast as any other fucking group of people in the country no the citizens it's not just republicans it's everybody well it's but the, 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 the republican one, the, party is i under, spine. i understand that what no, no 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 i'm saying like we are we are losing um and yeah i i say it because i'm the one who is like i like guns mm-hmm. but you're taking on my ability to fucking have them away yep. constantly just like California, like we're California, the North. And what I'm saying is if you don't like guns, you won't know. You don't care Mm -hmm. if you're against it. You don't give a shit except you're like, yeah, great. They can't get them more. But when you like these things, when you like bear hunting and bear hunting is now, uh, what's today? The, uh, what's uh, the 11th. There's going to be a thing for getting rid of bear hunting in Washington altogether. Completely. Completely. Oh boy. Yeah. Because why? Not a science based issue, it's a social based issue. Yeah. What the fuck? Like that that's the kind of shit I'm talking about. We are losing our rights so fast here in Washington because yeah, th- that's what I was saying earlier is the, the country took a shift in one direction, but here in Washington we're not gonna I don't think we're gonna feel that shift as much as the rest of the country is. No. Because I if anything, we're headed into a bigger bigger downturn. Fer- Ferguson's gonna be worse than Inslee. Yeah, he, he I, I is say a that. radical leftist, um, and also we we also need to close the uh, <laughs> close the loop there on on small businesses being affected by the way the government acts and that restrictor plate. That's what I was talking about. So the government right now acts like a restrictor plate on you if you are trying to run a small business. Where 
I, I don't understand why we wouldn't want the government to assist. Like, shouldn't our success be their success? Mm-hmm. Like, shouldn't the government act in, act in a way that best benefits the citizens? Why is it a boat anchor that we're driving, that we are dragging? That That's that's really what this red wave, I think, of, of uh, the national level elections was last week, is everybody looking at this this giant behemoth it's, it's, it's like being inside control with a 300 pounder on top of you and you're going like, wait a minute, what the fuck am I doing? I f- why, why are we just laying here letting this guy hold us down? And that, that's what the government has become. I feel like that the government is trying to count their chickens before they've hatched with all the small businesses. So instantly you're like, being like, yeah, give us money, more money, money, money. Oh, he yeah. wants to start a business. Okay. Give us a little money. Oh, you okay, had an idea. Give us money. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's kind of like we, that suck the lifeblood out of somebody who's willing to fucking give it to us because yeah. he wants to succeed or she wants to succeed and yeah. they're going to work hard for it. Well, guess what? If you want to work hard for it, pay up. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of where it's like, but maybe, that's, you, maybe you do a few years of not But that's been taxes. the history of man throughout time is a tyrannical ruler that takes too much. But that's what's happening is we're but, in a tyrannical fucking situation. And that's the same reason we came over here. Was due to taxes. Like, to think this wouldn't end any other way eventually, it's like, look throughout history. How do we get past this economic factor or this where you steal it from one, like, an elitist group to the common man? I mean, that's what socialism was based off of, was a working class and the bourgeois class. You know? So, this is something we've dealt with throughout the eternity of man. I think there's, I don't know. This is why I go back to Mike Zedong is like, how do you eliminate it and propel people forward? It has to be power is given to citizen more so than it is a bureaucrat. I mean, in a way it sounds horrible, but maybe AI could be a driving factor. If you had a computer with an open network that you could look at how it's influenced all the time by all the people, but it had no emotion or it's just look for efficiency for people. It's like, maybe we do breed a forum of government. I don't know, but people fuck it up. Yeah. People are the worst, man. (laughs) (laughs) That that might be the note to end it on right there. Okay. All right. Uh, If you guys are enjoying the show, give us a review on iTunes or Spotify or whatever app you're using because that helps get it in front of more people. Well, it it makes me feel good. Yeah. Period. (laughs) I I I think think we are five stars on iTunes. Well, fucking A. Goddamn right. All 26. (laughs) Thank you, Mom. (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs>